Hello guys, this is Caesar Creates and welcome back to my channel. Today we are building the third and the last habitat for our desert house inside the Elm Hill City Zoo. And the secret animal that we'll be adding today and that I teased you guys a bit with is the Gemsbok. Yeah, when we started this house I told you guys that we'll be adding one animal from the base game to this house. I didn't want to like uh, reveal all of my plans so you had something to like wait for and anticipate for <laughs> like uh, this animal reveal. It wasn't too difficult to guess, uh, some of you actually guessed it in the comments uh, that we'll be adding the Gemsbok. Uh, there are not many uh, desert animals in the base game, uh, we only have like a Bakchian Camel, the Gemsbok, uh, the Aardvark and that's basically it, I think. I think that also African Elephant, African Wild Dog and the Springbok are like happy with the bus the desert biome but they are not like those stable desert animals so uh, obviously I didn't want to add them here to the desert uh, house uh, so yeah the Gemsbok uh, was uh, my animal that I wanted to add here from the very beginning we already have Bactrian camels in the zoo we also have the aardvarks here uh, and we still didn't have Gemsbok and I love those animals, I love them from the very beginning and I think that they are super super underrated in this game like uh, in the Planet Zoo community not many uh, like very fancy uh, habitats are built for them from what I've seen on the you know uh, Planet Zoo uh, forums, Planet Zoo uh, Facebook groups when you guys share your creations also the reddit uh, there are not many like very nice uh, habitats for games box also other content content creators they don't record many uh, videos with them so yeah today I wanted to focus on them build something very very nice for them and something that will actually like uh, be uh, matching our desert house and the habitats that we've already built and uh, so that we ha get this like a uh, big cohesive desert area in our zoo uh, so yeah we'll have meerkats fennec foxes that we've built the habitat for last time by the way if you haven't seen that video uh, definitely go and check it out I will put the link down in the description and on the screen because I really love how the uh, fennec fox habitat has turned out I think that it is even better than the meerkat one I don't know why I just simply prefer, prefer the fennec fox habitat I think it's because of this ancient ruin thing that we did so yeah definitely if you haven't seen it uh, go and do it and yeah today we are focusing on the lovely Gemsbok uh, or oryx antelope as they are also called there are no many zoos in Europe that actually have Gemsbox uh, I just found out when I was looking for inspiration for this habitat. Uh, there, are, there's a herd of Gemsbok in uh, Lisbon Zoo uh, in Portugal. I also found the zoo to be very beautiful. Uh, I looked through many pictures of that zoo. And uh, this habitat is sort of like inspired by the Gemsbok habitat in Lisbon, but mixed with the Adax antelope uh, habitat in the same zoo. Because when I saw the Adax uh, antelope, by the way, I wish we had those antelopes in the game because they are simply stunning. Uh, when I saw this uh, habitat, I thought that it is a, such a cool idea to do something like this. I never did it like b uh, before, so I wanted to try it. I mean, it is like a slope, but this like gradually going coming down slope uh, with uh, those terraces or something. I'm not sure how it is called, but you know those like stairs or something in the ground that. Uh, you know you have those supporters or something that it is holding like the whole slope and the soil and preventing it from sliding down and it creates like those you know steps or stairs inside of the terrain 
uh, it was used, uh, it was like built with the planks and so on and I decided to use the new uh, beams from the Africa pack because in this desert house I focused to use as many uh, you know new pieces as I could so I thought that it would look cool and yeah I really love how it has turned out it was kind of like hard at first to do like to nail the uh, you know the scale the size of the habitat and also uh, the actual slope to be like gentle not too steep and then to do those like gradually going down like steps like in the terrain uh, you know, you cannot really do like the sharpest, uh, you know, terrain changes in Planet Zoo. There is always this like a bit annoying piece of terrain uh, that is always left. So it is not like perfect, but I still love how it is looking. Uh, of course, I wanted to look. I wanted it to look a bit like a desert, so it is ho the whole terrain is sand and we have those like supporting parts that are holding the terrain and uh, because of it it is looking like you know the taras thing like going down and yeah i really, really love how it has turned out and i really hope that you guys are able to understand what i am talking about because it is so hard for me to like uh explain this uh, this thing, this terraforming like style or something, I'm not really sure how it is called. If you know like how those things are called, please comment down below because I have no idea. I would know if I would be like uh, recording these videos in Polish in my native language, but unfortunately uh, like those like more technical things in English, they are a struggle to me. Uh, so if you know how this those things and how this like terraforming style is called in English, just please and help me in the comment section down below. I would be very, very grateful. I also created those retaining walls that, you know, also hold the terrain, but I use them where the terrain is more steep. Uh, you know, th those are those just bricks, large bricks that hold those large massive of, uh, you know, terrain, soil and so on. This is something really common in, you know, parks, in zoos, uh, in gardens, like to do when you have like those uh, differences in uh, terrain levels. I obviously use the colors uh, that are, you know, beige, sandy, like those typical desert colors uh, for those bricks to blend in a bit uh, into the habitat, but I still love them and I think that it is such a, you know, a nice detail to have when you have those, uh, you know, terrain changes. It is so realistic to add those and I, I am so glad that I came up with this idea. Of course, you will be able to see how well they look at the end of this video in the cinematic shots. So please stay till the end because, uh, you know, there will be some really nice views from this habitat if you would like to see them. As you can see, I already started to work on the fence of this habitat. I again wanted to use those new beams from the africa pack i love them so much i think that they are so versatile you can use them for so many things like fences decorations like build with them so yeah they are so great and also i love that how we can change the color of them uh, you can make those patterns more visible or less visible and this is simply amazing so yeah i wanted to use them uh, for a fence uh, in fact, uh, you know, I wanted this um, habitat, like this fence to be only uh, transparent in the places where guests actually observe the animals. So um, like in the back, the fence won't be like see-through at all. We ha will have a lot of trees behind the habitat. Uh, so the whole uh, fence will be made with those uh, new beams and also a uh, fabric material just as we did with the uh, kangaroos and you know uh, you guys really seem to like this idea judging by all by the comments uh, how you enjoyed this fence so uh, thank you for that and yeah now we are using it again here you'll be able to see it in a minute uh, but yeah, I really like the fence for this habitat and I'm glad that I you know took some 
uh, additional time to uh, really focus and do it well this time. And now it is time for a little reminder. As I told you guys in the last video, I will remind you about it a lot. Uh, so in the next weekend, we'll have the Kangathon 2021 and we'll be raising funds with the many, many content creators that you guys may know. Maybe you watch their videos as well. So uh, we are coming all together to raise money for the Congo Wildlife Park in South Africa. This park is really severely like uh, affected by the COVID uh, pandemic. They don't have any money to feed their animals and don't even start to mention the staff wages and so on. So we are all coming together, uh, you know, for this special event to raise funds for this park. And it will be, it will happen over the next weekend. So I just want to remind you to mark that those dates in your calendars to go watch the videos of me and other creators and uh, use your like spare money uh, maybe you have some uh, you know to go and to donate to this park because they are desperately uh, in need and we need simply to help so I hope that we'll be able to do it and yeah once again 22nd to 25th of July, Kangathon 2021. Please remember about this event organized by, by Posley and his team who brought together so many content creators and I'm super, super glad that I am a part of it. Uh, yeah, so see you at the Kangathon and now let's go back over to our video. As you can see, I am still working on a fence. Uh, it, as I told you, I wanted to make the fence nice this time, uh, to focus a bit more on it, so we are really uh, doing it today. Uh, I also wanted to talk about, about a bit about the games box and how underrated it is. As I told you guys, I never see a lot of videos or, or like those detailed creations for the games box and this is such a pity because they are such an interesting animals and they also look very very well in the game uh, I was so happy that they were introduced like from the very beginning because I think that they are somehow unique you don't like really see them in many European zoos in my local zoo there is a herd of oryx antelopes but there are the scimitar oryx, which is a different species of oryx antelopes. I think that there's only one zoo uh, in my country, in Poland, that has Gemsbok. Uh, so yeah, it's not super popular, but it's still such a majestic and beautiful animal that lives in those very uh, like difficult conditions. Their color, their patterning is so like cool looking. Uh, they are really, really beautiful. I love their long horns. Uh, actually, this is like the only complaint for me uh, for the games book in the game. Uh, the horns, they look a bit like too thin, like very pointy. If they would be like slightly thicker, I think that they would be perfect. But you know, this is just a little, little thing. Uh, so yeah, the games book is really, really nice animal. They have also those really cool sounds in the game. Their babies look really nice. And also when the, you know, different color variations were added to the zoo, uh, to the planet zoo with one of the updates. And now they are looking even better because they got those really, really cool uh, variations. So now when you have the herd of games book in your zoo, you can really distinguish one uh, from another because those like variations are really visible. So yeah, those animals are really cool. And if you haven't built any Anything nice for them uh, for a longer time definitely go and do so because I don't want them to be so underrated as they are uh, right now because I simply simply love them uh, it is like the similar case uh, like with the Nyala I think that it is also very underrated animal even in the you know uh, advertisement of this game in social media of Planet Zoo they don't like showcase those animals too much uh, comparing to others 
so yeah, I would love it to be changed because those animals are so, so nice. I love the ungulates, uh, like in general, because they are such a, you know, staple zoo animals there. Those easier to care for, but also very interesting, uh, nevertheless, animals. So yeah, I am very, very happy that they are here in this game. I would also love to see more of those ungulates. I mean, like Adax antelope, like impalas, like elant antelope. Uh, and so on. There is also Nilgau antelope uh, that are really really interesting. So yeah, I know that some people complain that we have too much of those, but really those animals are the most common kind of animals in zoos. So uh, I will be like perfectly fine with more of those and as I told you guys, I would actually love to see more of those because I think that we are missing those, you know, very common species. Also, for example, the dick dick, which is the smallest antelope. And, you know, it would be like amazing to have it in game. Okay, while I was talking, I already uh, managed to create uh, a holding pen. The holding pen, which we are always creating for those uh, bigger animals. Uh, its function is to, you know, separate the animals when there is a need. For example, when there is a conflict within the herd, when there are some fights, when the, like, when the small male is starting to grow up and fights with his father for the dominance, they can be separated. Uh, when the mother just gave birth to a little one and they need to some, they need some time to rest They also can be separated and finally when there is like some illness uh, Inside like among the herds it, they can be easily separated thanks to this additional uh, Pen also when the habitat needs to be cleaned or maintained the animals can be closed in there so that they don't interrupt I also started to add foliage to the habitat. I added a lot of trees and uh, I did a little thing that is really common for zoos. Uh, I added this like pen or enclosed space for the plants because obviously games box are, uh, you know, herbivores. So they would eat all of the plants that they can reach in the habitat. So uh, to like make sure that the habitats have a bit of greenery inside uh, the zoos often like i create those small pens uh, with a mesh or something to prevent the animals uh, from you know grazing on those plants so that they can grow and still there is some greenery inside of a habitat there is some shadow for the animals uh, so yeah that's a nice way to to sneak uh, some green, some plants to the habitat uh, when you are building for the ungulates to make sure that they simply wouldn't uh, destroy all the plants. Of course, if you want to play uh, this game in a realistic way, because obviously the animals in this game don't eat uh, the plants, uh, but if they did, uh, I'm sure that something like this would be really useful. I also uh, always add, as you can see, those protections for the trees, for the tree barks, uh, like to prevent the animals from biting the trees, from, you know, uh, grazing on the bark uh, so that they cannot, you know, slowly uh, destroy uh, the tree uh, or the tree trunk. Uh, so yeah, this is also really common to add in ungulates uh, and herbivorous animals, uh, you know, to prevent them from destroying the trees. Uh, so I always try to add them here in the Elm Hill City Zoo to all of the habitats with animals like that. We did it for reindeers, for camels, for, uh, you know, antelopes. We uh, already have like the pronghorn antelope in here and we also did it uh, that way for them so yeah this is something that i like to use for the sake of some realism in a second we'll focus on adding rocks uh, to this habitat and some little plants that are growing in the crevices of the rocks and you know that have like a chance to grow a bit uh, before they were eaten by the games block or there are just species that the games block doesn't like to eat uh, so yeah we'll be adding them uh, shortly uh, to their habitat uh, i will add some of the desert rocks and uh, some of those small aquatic rocks but 
but I won't go too crazy because I still want uh, those animals to have a lot of space, you know, to roam around, to run, run uh, together as a herd. So uh, yeah, we will be adding some of them, but not too much. And why I am doing it, let me give you guys some fun facts about the Gamsbok. They are really interesting animals and I really wanted to share with you some fun facts about them. The wild Gamsboks appear in the arid regions of southern Africa, such as Kalahari Desert. They live in herds from 10 to 40 individuals. Those herds, they uh, consist of dominant male and few non-dominant males and females. So actually you could have more than one male in one habitat, but in the game you could, or you can only have one, but you potentially could have more and it would be working. They usually feed early in the morning or late afternoon to avoid midday heat. They are mainly uh, desert dwelling antelopes and they do not depend on drinking water to supply their needs. They are excellent runners and when threatened they can reach speeds up to 60 km per hour. Gamsboks uh, consume grasses, shrubs, roots uh, and supplement their water intake by eating wild uh, melons and cucumbers. They don't face major threats at the moment, but they are wildly hunted for their spectac spectacular horns and uh, meat. Their numbers are high, so they are concerned as least concern. Uh, which is really nice to hear, finally, some an animal that isn't endangered, so yeah. Their spectacular horns can uh, be up to 85 centimeters, some individuals have uh, their, their horns even at the size of one meter or above. It is actually uh, the like easiest way to distinguish the two genders of Gamsbox uh, by their horns. The females have slightly longer and thinner horns and the females use them mainly to protect the, themselves and also their uh, children from the predators like uh, lions. Uh, the males mainly use them to fight for dominance within the herd. When the female gives birth to the calf, it will actually hide it for about three to six weeks, uh, taking care of it and protecting it from the predators. Uh, it will remain nearby uh, to the calf, uh, like nursing them. Uh, they uh, have the special brown color to camouflage themselves, I mean the uh, little ones. So when they lie on the sandy dunes or you know between the rocks they are like barely visible because of this color. The Gemsbok actually lives in the USA which is very interesting. It was introduced to the United States in 1961. 93 of them were released in the New Mexico uh, in the United States and now it is estimated that there are around 3,000 of them living uh, in the United States because they lack, you know, uh, their natural predators in there. So they thrive, they breed, and uh, the population is growing strong. So unfortunately, one of the tourist attractions in New Mexico is going, uh, you know, to hunt for them. You can like shoot and kill your own Gamsbok. I am totally against, uh, you know, of hunting, uh, you know, killing animals for fun. Uh, but yeah, it, when you are in New Mexico, you can go and hunt your own Gamsbok just in case you like want to do it. But uh, please, please don't, don't do it. It is like cruel and it's not fun to kill other animals for your own entertainment. Yeah, that's just cruelty. In a minute, I will start to work on the shelter for the Gems box. Uh, I wanted to use again a lot of materials from the new Africa pack, so I'll be using those new arches, uh, plus the arches uh, from the new pack, and also again a lot of do those new uh, beams. I think that in the end it looks so cool, it looks like this typical desert, uh, you know building style that I was going for and I think that it looks just like it 
uh, inside of the shelter we'll have the stalls for the games box so you know there will be one big one for the entire herd to sleep and there will be like one separated uh, that will be like you know not too visible so that when the animals want to have some privacy they can go there or if they there is a case that they won't need to be separated they also uh, potentially could be because the guests actually will be able to like look inside of the shelter look as the gamesbok are sleeping in there or just chilling uh, i just found this idea in the uh, I think it is called Sahara House uh, in the Wrocław Zoo in Poland. Uh, we have it uh, there. So the you know there's also a different kind of oryx, but they have their shelter inside of the you know desert house or Sahara house where the uh, guests can go inside and see how they are you know sleeping there. I also like went through a lot of uh, you know antelope mm, uh, shelters so that I can have some inspiration for my future videos. And I saw that in many of those shelters, like besides the bedding, uh, there are a lot of you know branches a lot of you know logs and this is probably because those animals just like to graze on them and have something to do when, while they are like close in there so I also wanted to give them that uh, they'll have some branches and so on obviously they won't use it but this is something just uh, solely for your and my imagination uh, so yeah, don't be surprised when you will see some of the logs laying inside of their shelter. So when it comes to our next episode, there won't be any new habitat or any new animal in it. Uh, it will be just, you know, building and finishing the desert house. Uh, and also I will give you guys a tour around the desert house. So if you want to see it, definitely stay tuned till the next video. Uh, because you know we will be doing some detailing inside and also some really fun things outside of this building uh, I will do something interesting I think with the plants so uh, definitely go and check it out next week I think it will be live on Wednesday if I will have time to record the voiceover because I already like finished uh, it finished building and I am super super happy with how the desert house looks how uh, you know the entrance and the uh, entrance area and the uh, whole interior of it looks uh, I w in in the real life I would love to go there and you know uh, experience something like this so yeah I hope that you guys will enjoy it also so stay tuned uh, stay tuned till the next week after we'll be done with our desert house I think that uh, we will do like three or four more habitats in the zoo and this will be the end of season two of the Elm Hill City Zoo and we'll do a tour once again of everything that we've built in here. Uh, I will give you guys, I'm I'm not like still decided if I should, uh, you know, give you the tour of the entire zoo of everything that we've built or only uh, you know the things that the habitats and buildings that we've built in the season two uh, and you know leave the things that we've built uh, on the, at the beginning but maybe uh, I should listen to your opinion like what what is your opinion about it uh, so please tell me uh, in the comment section what do you think if you want to see this entire zoo or if you want to see just the things that we've built recently uh, because I am sure that if uh, you know I would uh, like have uh, have to like showcase everything this tour will be very very long so in case you would like be willing to uh, watch it that then I definitely will do it uh, so yeah uh, just let me know if you want to the tour of the entire zoo or just the things that we've like created last time it would be very very helpful for me to decide but obviously still we need to build those uh, like three or four I still haven't decided how many but uh, those this is the number of habitats that we'll be going for 
uh, for sure. And don't be afraid, that won't be uh, obviously the end of the Elm Hill City Zoo. I have plans for like, I don't know, 10 seasons <laughs> to come. So uh, don't be afraid. Uh, this is just, and like I uh, came up with this idea of the seasons that we built, we built some of the, you know, habitats building and so on. And then I do a tour just to update you guys on everything. So the tour marks the like the end of the season and then we can you know start a new one and again do a tour and so on and so on so yeah that will be just an end of season two after i will finish the shelter i will focus on the viewing area for the guests like a viewing platform i wanted the guests to have like two separate viewing opportunities for the games box you know, the traditional one from the, uh, you know, inside of the building, like you have like, those windows just as for the meerkats and for the, uh, for the fennec foxes and their uh, inside habitats. Uh, so just like this, you have those viewing for the games box, but also when the weather is nice and you have those summer months, uh, the, this viewing platform would be open to public so we can go outside there and uh, see the games box, uh, you know, a bit like closer, a bit from a different per perspective. I will add there a new Vista points and let me sh just tell you that it lo it like works super super well. The guests actually go there and you know watch the animals from this point that I want them to watch it from. Uh, and yeah, this is super super cool. I really like how this viewing platform is looking and overall I am super happy about this habitat and how it how it has turned out because at first I had so much like trouble with the uh, the scale I did it too small then too big uh, you know uh, the terraforming in this game isn't always too like easy <laughs> sometimes you have to like really uh, like focus and do it like do several attempts just to nail what you want to do so yeah definitely I struggle a bit with the uh, whole terrain in here but in the end I'm super super happy ha about how it has turned out and I hope you guys uh, will like it as well I always try to talk to you guys through all the speed build uh, part of the video but unfortunately today I don't have like too much time so I'll have to uh, make this voiceover a bit shorter so sorry about this I hope that you will uh, you know watch this video uh, till the end even though i won't be speaking to you but there will be some you know uh, viable content of me building building this platform so if you want to see definitely uh, stay till the end there will also be cinematic shots of this entire habitat so you don't want to miss it because it looks simply beautiful at the end like I'm so like bragging right now, but yeah, you know, uh, I am very, very happy about this habitat, about uh, how well it looks uh, with, you know, it just looks like a habitat for a games box. I don't know why, but it just suits those animals so much. And yeah, I really, really love it. And I hope you guys will enjoy it as well. So please stay till the end of this video. It would really, really mean a lot to me. Okay, guys, so this is all that I have for you today. Please enjoy the rest of this speed build. And as I told you, stay till the end because there will be some cinematic shots of this entire habitat. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and if you want to see me build more of those beautiful habitats for those lovely animals. It really would mean a lot to me and would help this channel to grow. If you liked this video, please give it a big thumbs up down below and ring the bell if you want to be notified every time I upload a new video. Also, comment down below if you enjoyed this video or if you have anything nice to say about our lovely games book and give them some, you know, support for being such an underrated animal in this game. They totally don't deserve it, so please give them some words of support. Also, if you have any recommendations for my future videos, they are so very welcome. Uh, so please uh, just write them down in the comment section. 
uh, all the comments uh, I try to like reply to them so they for sure won't be unnoticed so yeah thank you guys for watching have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next one bye guys
Ja.